What is up, motherfuckers? So uh, right now, all we got is this center container inside a control node. And what we want to do is we want to add the texture rect right here. And in the texture rect, I'm going to make a new atlas and then go over here and load a sprite sheet that we have. And this is not going to use the animation player. All we're going to do is just straight up use GD script. And that's how we're going to do this. Now, it might be better just to use the animation player, but this is a way to do it if you don't want to use that for some reason. And uh, yeah. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead call this spinning head. And then I'll uh, just shave, save this as a scene, as its own scene, so that way we have it saved somewhere else. I'm just going to open it up in there. So what we're going to have right here is we're going to have this uh, atlas texture. And we have a point to this image, but we need to set the width. And I'm going to set, instead of 512 by 256, I'm going to set it to 128 by 128. So that way it only displays one of these images at a time because they're all 128 by 128 images. And uh, yeah. So that's the image right there. And uh, right now we just have it not animated. If we just press play, all we're going to see is that it's just in the center, not doing anything. So we're going to utilize the Atlas Textures region property, which you can imagine, usually by default, you have the whole region as this whole shebang. But our region is going to actually just have a width of 128 by 128. So just imagine a little box right here. And the position right here would be 0 and 0. So that's the width and that's the height. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shift the position, which is 0, 0, by, um, by the width and height. And each time we shift by the width and height, we advance to the next frame. So this would be still the width is uh, 128 by 128. And but the position will now also be 128 and 0. So we've shifted by the width and moved to the next frame. And that's how we're going to animate. Okay, so I'm going to make a script. First, we'll set up our export variables. Rows will dictate how many frames we have vertically, and columns will dictate how many frames we have horizontally. This allows us to access our image as a 2D array of sorts. And then we'll have our FPS variable, which dictates how fast our animation is played. We'll now create a ready function and then we'll edit the scene tree. We're going to add a timer to the scene and within our ready function we're going to set the wait time variable of the timer to a time variable that we generate using the FPS export variable. This will be the inverse of frames per second. So 1 divided by uh, FPS cast into a float and then uh, that will just be 1 divided by 18 in this case. And then that will make sure that our timer iterates at um, that amount of frames per second, so 18 frames per second. Now that the wait time on the timer is set, we will connect the timeout signal of the timer to a new function and test it out if it's playing. We will need to use the timer.start in the ready function to start the timer unless you set auto start on the timer, but in this case we did not. And here we can see that it is printing. Now we're going to need variables that allow us to manipulate the texture that we have to animate the texture rect. We'll utilize a reference to the atlas to grab the region's size. But first we need to initialize the reference to null in case we ever want to check for if it was set or not we can just check null. And in the ready function we'll give this variable a reference to the texture stored in the texture rect. Since we are actually in the texture rect scene we can simply grab the texture and perform a check to make sure it is of type atlas texture to ensure that we can utilize the region property. Otherwise, we'll print an error as seen here. Next, we're going to make a variable called size atlas that represents the size or width and height of the region property of the atlas. This is just a shortcut variable to make things look more clean when we're iterating through frames in the texture. We'll utilize the get size function of the atlas to get the region's size and we'll return if the texture that we found is not an of type atlas texture. And also since uh, we're gonna go to a max amount of rows, we're gonna want a current row of type int is equal to zero and var current column of type int is equal to zero. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start from the zeroth row, go up to the uh, one row, which will be like one less than the two and then we're going to go up to the thir like th uh, third column. And then, because uh, we're starting from zero and working our way up to that. So it'll be kind of like a for loop that we're doing. And we're just going like, to keep shifting by, uh, by size atlas, one of the dimensions. On to the next frame function, 
we're first going to remove the print and then put a check for if we've surpassed the amount of columns that we've specified in our export variable at the top of the script. If our current column is not past the max amount of columns or horizontal frames, then we'll animate horizontally first. Now, since we're changing a texture, which is a resource of our texture rect, we'll want to keep track of a current position in our script, which will be initialized to a zero vector. We'll increment this variable at first, instead of directly changing the texture rect's atlas texture. So I ran the issues when there are multiple texture rect instances of the same scene, changing the atlas's uh, region property directly. When I increase the atlas's region property directly by the uh, size atlas, then every single instance was affected by that change. So then it would just like uh, not follow the timer that we set and it would instead just uh, animate as fast as possible. We don't want that. So uh, this local variable makes sure that they are all at the same point if the te atlas texture is not marked as unique. After increasing that local variable current position by the width of size atlas, we're going to set the region's position's x-axis to the x-axis of current position. We'll then increment the current column by one as well. Now comes the if we've passed the max amount of columns check. And say if current column is greater than or equal to columns, then we're gonna set current uh, position dot x is equal to zero. And then we're gonna set atlas dot region dot position dot x is equal to zero. And then this is just like doing the same thing. So this is, so we've reached the max amount of columns. We want to go back to the leftmost column once we've reached the max amount. So that way it plays in a loop. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to say current column is equal to zero because we've reached the leftmost column, which is the zeroth column. And if we play right now, you'll see that it's already animated, but only uh, half the animation is playing. That's because we still need the other half because we need to iterate through rows. So what we're going to do is like down here is that every time we've reached the max amount of columns, we're going to want to check within this, uh, within this uh, if statement, we're going to want to check if current, basically do the same thing that we're doing here, but just replace it with, um, with uh, rows instead of columns. So I'll just like uh, tab these and see right here, all we're going to do is say why just replace this with the y-axis and y and right here instead say current row plus one and then just do y y and then row so I need to check current row right there and say current row so that's the danger of copying and pasting so now we got rows and now this should work so now it's playing in a loop, it's playing the entire animation. So let's just say like uh, if we doubled the animation, let's put it into the like same location basically. All right, so now we've got two images in here. So we got Charles Big, which is right here. And we're gonna want, we're gonna replace this with that. So let's say Charles Big. And we're just gonna put that right there. And we still, we're gonna still keep it 128 by 128. But what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we set rows to four. And that way, it'll still play the correct animation. See, you can see that it's playing the second animation because it's a little offset. So yeah, so now that's all you gotta do. You just gotta make sure you increase the rows and columns. And of course, like it might help to like keep like a track of like maybe your max frame or something. Okay, so if you wanna keep track of max frames, like if you wanna like set maybe you only wanna move 10 frames, then what you can do is you can have a max frame variable that's defaulted to negative one. So if it's negative one, that just means um, by default, this is not going to that max frame, it'll just go through all the rows and columns. And uh, you could have a current frame that just keeps track of the current frame you're on. So to find the current frame is easy. You're just like find it like a, index of a 2d array of sorts and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say current frame is equal to current row times uh columns which is like the width so this will be like um basically like which which part of the image you're on so uh if the current row is zero and the like your columns is four so it's four images to that way so it'll just be the zeroth uh, index right now and then you'll say 
current call. And uh, what this is going to do is going to find the right row you're at and then just add by which current column you're on. And then that's how we're going to find the current frame. So if you're uh, like, let's say on frame six, what this is going to happen right here is you'd be on row one times four, which is uh, just four, of course. And then uh, you're going to go to the second row, basically. Uh, I'm going to open up the full thing. So you go to the second row. And then you're going to be on frame 6, so you'll just add by 2, so 5, 6, and then you'll end up on this frame right here. And then that's what would happen. You would just add by 2 right here, since you're on the current column. And then, yeah, that's how you get to the 6th frame. So, we could uh, just print this out real quick just to make sure it's correct. Current frame. And it should just play the entire animation. So now it's getting up to 15. And make sure to do this before, because if you do it afterwards, what's going to happen is that it, uh, you might uh, lose a frame when you're actually doing the, this check that I'm about to do right now. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say if current frame is greater than or equal to max frame, then what we're going to do is we're going to reset everything. And also we want to check if max frame is greater than or equal to zero and this so we're only going to do this reset if we've uh if we actually set a max frame and if the current frame is greater than or equal to that max frame then we'll reset everything but otherwise um we're just going to go through this like normally but we're just going to happen to keep track of frames which isn't that expensive anyway but yeah so what we're going to want to do we're just going to want to make sure we just reset everything back to zero so actually instead of this i could just do current position is equal to vector Two, and there's like a zero vector that I can set to. Same goes for atlas. Uh, the atlas dot region dot position is equal to current position. Just set it to the same thing. Well, the current frame doesn't need to be set to zero. All it needs to be set to is just this. Oh yeah, we need to set current column is equal to zero. Current row is equal to zero, and then everything's reset, and we can just return. So that way we have that right here and we can just put the print right here so that way we can keep track of it. And boom, now we have it going up to 10. So 10 is the max frame I think. Is that what I have it set to? Yep, max frame is 10. And uh, it's going up to that and then stopping. So if we set it to like 16, then it might It'll try to go past that, but it'll just stop at the rows and columns. So even if you set it past rows and columns, it's not going to do anything. Let's just say like some crazy number like that. It's just still going to go to 15. But if you set it somewhere below that, let's say 15, you'll just still go to 15. But if you set it somewhere like 1, it's only going to play like one frame and then that's it. And then that's all. That's all we're going to do. But yeah. So if this helped, I hope you all have a wonderful motherfucking day.